The intrinsic value of gold is not of the order of things like food or air, things that are essential to live. So what is it about gold that practically compels people to value it? One reason is that gold is rare. In fact, it's been estimated that all the gold mined for the last 500 years, which is probably well over 90% of all the gold ever mined, amounts to about 50,000 tons. Gold is dense, so dense, that if you took all 50,000 tons and made a cube of it, the cube would only be 15 yards on a side. That doesn't seem like very much. One ton of gold isn't very big. One ton of gold, 2,000 pounds, shaped like a cube, would be only 13 inches on a side. It's hard to imagine that a cube of gold only 13 inches wide could not be lifted without a block and tackle or power machinery. This is why gold jewelry is usually not solid. Even chunky all-gold necklaces and bracelets are usually made hollow. Otherwise, they would be uncomfortably heavy to wear. Maybe this heaviness is another reason gold is so passionately valued. There's a lot packed into small spaces. Perhaps heaviness is on a par with rarity. But the relative rarity of gold cannot account for the near-frenzied following it commands. The fact that its rich, deep color and smooth texture delight the senses must also contribute to its value, as must the fact that gold has been readily available to people with only minimal technical ability. If you want to make something useful out of a gold nugget, all you have to do is bang it into shape while it's cold. You don't even have to heat it. Banging is a technical skill that even our earliest ancestors seemed able to master. Gold dust in rivers or nuggets lying close to the surface were most likely the first sources of gold to be utilized by early people. Uproading a tree or plowing a furrowed row of soil have both on occasion exposed small nuggets of gold. Actual veins of gold are much rarer, and because they lie deeper in the earth, are far more difficult to reach and harder still to mine. But panning for gold has been around for many thousands of years. Some cultures used a coarse cloth a corduroy to wash river sand that contained gold dust. The heavier gold particles settled between the texture where they can be easily picked out with the fingers. Other cultures used sheepskins to accomplish the same end. In fact, sheepskins used to pan for gold was the original meaning of golden fleece. Gold is so malleable that one ounce of it can be beaten into a single continuous piece of wire 50 miles long. If the same ounce were used to plate wire made from some other substance, say copper or silver, there would be enough gold in one ounce to plate a wire 1,000 miles long. The same one ounce lump could also be pounded into a flat sheet that would cover 300 square feet. It can be beaten into a film so thin, seven or eight molecules thick, that light comes through it. And curiously, such light is greenish, not yellow. Due to its efficient electrical properties and the fact that it will not corrode, gold is used to coat contact points, terminals, printed circuits, and semiconductors in the electric and electronic industries. In many electronic applications, there is no substitute for gold. Gold also has the unusual ability to reflect close to 98% of incident infrared radiation that falls upon it. That's why the face masks on astronaut spacesuits are plated with gold. The plating is thin enough to see through, and yet it reflects practically all the dangerous radiation from the sun. With no atmosphere to filter the sun's rays, astronauts need the protection of gold-plated visors. Even buildings in warm climates on Earth have used gold plating on windows to reduce the amount of air conditioning required inside. These unique practical applications may make gold appear irreplaceable, but if gold didn't exist, engineers would undoubtedly find ways to do without it and none of its practical applications account for the unusual passion people seem to display for this metal. In the final assay, we seem forced to return to the enormous symbolic quality of gold. Gold is bright, but it doesn't scintillate. Gold reflects as though it radiates like the sun. Combined with its incorruptibility, gold became a fitting image of transcendence. To possess it suggests to religiously minded people that they too might transcend sickness and old age and death. It's no coincidence that the ancient Greek word for gold is Christos. But gold is also considered transcendent by people more concerned with material than spiritual profit. Owning it ensures that one's wealth will most likely transcend currency devaluation or market depressions, even an out-and-out -out collapse of the entire credit system. In a very real way, gold's invisible influence on the human mind is still very much with us. If it isn't, then how could we possibly explain that the discovery of minuscule amounts of microscopic gold crystals in an out-of-the-way volcano in faraway Antarctica would make headline news.